What's up guys, this is Anime Crossover, I'm back with another episode of What If Naruto Was The Rise Flash Part 9 and if you did enjoy this video, give this video a like and if you're new to my channel and like my content, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more crossover fictions with a twist. Now let's begin this new video. Chapter 6 Pied Piper is stirring the stew. February 2015 Naruto, 23 years old. Linda began visiting Star Labs on a regular basis when the researchers discovered her metahuman ability to make light. She could make pure light with her hands, absorb light for energy and healing, and create light force waves with her hands. Dr. Wells hypothesized that because Linda controlled light, she could create light structures, fly, and even bend light to become invisible. Of all, she still needed complete control of her powers to make such a bold move. But she was getting there, and she was now a full-fledged member of Team Flash. The arc reactor had also made significant progress, and it was now 70% complete. Barry had contributed significantly, and with his assistance in Naruto's extraordinary speed, the construction was moving much more quickly. Naruto was able to speed up the process by figuring out better energy calculations and design shortcuts, and now the entire math and physics of the arc reactor made total sense to him, whereas he barely knew half of it a few months before. It was as if his mind was sharpening with each use. The squad was currently in the cortex at night, while Flash and Impulse were on their way to prevent the Royal Flush Gang from fleeing with stolen gems. As Flash and Impulse departed the Star Labs, they were on their way to stop the gang from fleeing on bikes. Guys, hurry up. They're going to get away, Caitlin remarked as she, Linda, and Sisko watched the gang's estimated path across the city on the computers. There's an intersection coming up. This should slow them down, Sisko stated as he pressed a button, causing the intersection's traffic lights to turn red, causing a traffic gridlock. But all it did was separate the king, queen, and ace as they continued to move. Flash and Impulse came to a halt at the crossroads. Guys, where'd they go? Flash inquired. Right left. Left right. Cisco and Caitlin alternated directions, confusing Flash and Impulse. Okay, stop. You guys aren't helping, Impulse stated. Boys, pay attention. Barry, head north and take a detour on King back to Adams Avenue. Naruto, Queen is heading towards the bridge, Dr. Wells stated as the two parted ways. I see her, Impulse exclaimed as he noticed Queen ahead. Make her go west before Fremont, Dr. Wells shouted, as Impulse rapidly erected a roadblock, forcing Queen to choose the street on the left. Done, Impulse said as Dr. Wells' plan brought the Royal Flush Gang back together at an intersection. Impulse rushed by, grabbing the keys to their motorcycles, got the keys. As the police arrived and the Royal Flush Gang surrendered, Dr. Wells declared, checkmate. Naruto and Barry returned to Star Laboratories with a sense of accomplishment that another set of crooks had been dealt with. Give me some, Sisko exclaimed, high-fiving each of them. Well done, gentlemen, Dr. Wells said, applauding. We need a picture, Sisko replied, pulling out his phone as everyone looked at him as if he was insane. Dude, I'm pretty sure the first superhero rule is not taking photos of yourself in your suit, Naruto said. Oh, please, this is just for us, to document everything, Sisko said. Who knows, maybe people will want to know how all this happened in the future, Wells speculated. All right, but if you want the whole story to be told in the future, then we all have to be in it, Barry replied as Sisko smiled. Caitlin said, first, let me put on some makeup. The future isn't concerned with your makeup, Sisko explained. Besides, you don't need it, Naruto explained as the group headed over to Dr. Wells. He was standing in the center, with Sisko to his left and Caitlin to his right. Naruto was standing behind him, his arm wrapped around Linda. All right, big smiles. Three, dot two, dot one, Barry shouted as he dashed over to the group next to Naruto while the camera snapped the shot, then back to get the phone. Ha. Huh. Caitlin inquired, does that count as a selfie? Absolutely, Barry said as he handed back his phone to Sisko, who was overjoyed with the photo. As Naruto removed his suit, Barry approached Dr. Wells. Nicely done out there, Speedy, Linda replied making Naruto grow. I told you the nickname wasn't sticking, Naruto replied, as Linda laughed. Give it some time, it'll stick, Linda replied, but nicely done out there. Yeah, regular robbers should think twice about committing crimes in Central City, Naruto replied, smiling, but, how are you doing? I'm fine, I'm getting into the rhythm you guys have here, Linda explained. It takes some getting used to, I was a newcomer here months ago, and it took some time getting used to how the team worked without me, and to be honest, I still feel like a sidekick sometimes, Naruto remarked. Linda quipped as she kissed him, oh, but a cute sidekick. If we're done for the night, I've still got a piece for my editor that I need to finish. 
Okay, how about lunch tomorrow? Naruto said. Linda replied as they kissed, sounds perfect, good night. Night, Naruto said as she and the others walked away. Well done, Naruto, you were outstanding tonight, Dr. Wells said. And, just so you know, you're not a sidekick. Thank you, Dr. Wells, Naruto said, putting his suit on the mannequin. I was hoping to go over a few things with you. I've had some ideas that I'd like your feedback on. Of course. Perhaps we can move this to my humble abode rather than reside here in Star Labs. I could use a good drink. Dr. Wells stated as Naruto nodded and super rushed Dr. Wells to his house. They entered through the front entrance as Naruto flipped a light switch and Dr. Wells touched a button on his phone, causing Nessun Dorma to begin playing. Ah. All these years and I was hoping it would improve your musical taste, Naruto stated as they made their way to the kitchen. Classics are known as classics for a reason, Naruto, because they will remain classics whether it's now or 200 years from now, Dr. Wells said as Naruto walked over and poured Dr. Wells a drink of scotch. Hey, I like classics as much as the next guy, but good classics, Frank Sinatra, Queen, Jimi Hendrix, and Michael Jackson are great, but that music doesn't make me feel like I'm at a funeral, Naruto remarked as he brought Dr. Wells his glass and they sat down at the kitchen table. Naruto pulled out a tablet to show Dr. Wells some schematics and designs he'd created. Now, what plans do you have that you want me to look over? Dr. Wells inquired as Naruto displayed schematics for advanced medical technology, new microprocessors, and even energy cells powered by the arc reactor that they could sell to companies in other cities, as well as a method to convert that energy into fuel for cars and planes. This is incredible. When did you find the time to do this? You'll find that as a speedster, you seem to have endless time. I had to do something to keep myself busy. Naruto explained. Plus, a lot of those ideas came from my parents' journal. I just had to suss out the math. They did a lot of the hard work. I wouldn't sell yourself short, Naruto. This is impressive math and engineering that will help the world's reliance on oil and could help the environment, Dr. Wells stated. Thank you, Dr. Wells, Naruto replied, but I wouldn't call myself a genius. I don't know, it's like my brain keeps getting better since the particle accelerator went off and I've been impulse. I mean, I was smart before, but now I'm working out math to problems I didn't think I could ever solve. Dr. Wells gazed at the patterns and at Naruto as he stood up to fetch a drink of water. These designs and calculations were of extremely brilliant caliber. Dr. Wells could tell Naruto had the capacity to surpass Sisko in intelligence, and it was only Sisko's expertise and time with engineering that put him ahead of Naruto at the time. Dr. Wells calculated that if Naruto stayed at this pace, he would eventually overtake Sisko. Dot and perhaps even himself, which was an intriguing thought. Brains do better with age, and it could be a side effect of your enhanced speed and cellular makeup. The designs for the armaments you made for the Arrow and his cohorts prove that. That sonic scream device was a work of genius. Cisco level genius. Dr. Wells stated. Thank you, Dr. Wells. So, what do you think? Naruto asked. I mean, if we finish the designs, Star Labs will be back on top as one of the leading pillars of science, not to mention it would give the team and Star Labs good revenue. As the phone rang, Dr. Wells responded, My trust is more than enough for that, but I do see your point. When Dr. Wells picked up his phone, he discovered it was a blocked number. Harrison Wells. The sound system had shorted out and the music had stopped, which was a terrible omen. Hello. Said Dr. Wells into the phone. As the line dropped, a voice remarked, We both know what you did. Here's my happy thought, but it could be a wrong number. Naruto added as Dr. Wells strolled over to the safe he kept near the living room. He entered the correct combination and opened the safe, revealing the revolver. I still despise the fact that you have that. Dr. Wells stated as he cocked the rifle, not all of us have powers. He and Naruto went through the home until they came to a halt near the open air living room with glass windows on the sides and ceiling. It's time to pay the piper, yelled the voice over the house speakers as they heard the high pitched whine of a sonic instrument. As Naruto grabbed Dr. Wells and dragged him back to the kitchen, the glass began to break and fall. As Naruto shielded Dr. Wells from flying glass, another high-pitched whine erupted, forcing all of the glass on the front side of the house to explode. It came to a halt as Naruto and Dr. Wells witnessed the destruction of whoever did this. Okay, so it wasn't a typo, Naruto replied as Dr. Wells looked at him. As Joe and Barry came early the next morning to find a lot of broken glass and wrecked furniture, they called the cops. Dr. Wells was waiting for them when the front doors opened. Come in, he urged, and they followed him. Look, Joe, I apologize for everything. Naruto shouldn't have called the cops. It really feels like a case of a lot for a little, and I got a prank call before all of this happened. This feels like more than a prank, doctor. 
Joe stated as they witnessed the shattered living room with glass everywhere, as well as Naruto gathering evidence. Well, there are those who believe I did not suffer sufficiently for the particle accelerator explosion last year, and some of them act on it, Dr. Wells explained as Caitlin and Sisko approached. Are you okay, Dr. Wells? Caitlin inquired. Dr. Snow, I'm fine. A little chilly. Otherwise, I'm fine. Hello, Sisko. Make yourselves at home as best you can, I'm going to make a hotel reservation. Dr. Wells stated as he walked out. Whoa, this place is sick, Sisko exclaimed. Yeah. Hey. What took you guys so long? Barry inquired. We got lost, Sisko said. Caitlin informed him, we've never been here before. Really, never? Asked Barry. Dr. Wells prefers to keep his personal life private, Caitlin explained. What about Naruto? Barry inquired as they watched Naruto test the sound system. I came with him last night when everything happened, and I've been here a few times. I grew up with Dr. Wells, remember? Naruto asked as he removed and packaged the circuit board. Naruto bagged the evidence and overheard Eddie and Joe discussing Wells and how he claimed to be in the middle of the room with no scratches. As Joe approached, Naruto yelled out, Joe. Hey. I overheard you, Eddie, and Dr. Wells didn't tell you, but I was here last night as well. So, you saw what happened? Joe inquired, to which Naruto nodded. And it wasn't a typical vandalism attack, but we couldn't exactly tell Eddie and the patrol officers that, Naruto remarked as Joe agreed. Do you think this is a metahuman? Joe inquired. I don't think Ameta did this, but something is off, Naruto remarked as Joe nodded. And I was with Dr. Wells in the center of the room and super sped him away when the glass broke, which is why he doesn't have a scratch on him. But I have the necessary evidence, so we should go to Star Labs. They arrived at Star Labs, where Dr. Wells had informed everyone he knew about the perpetrator of the incident, Hartley Rathaway. As Dr. Wells briefed Joe, Barry, and Linda about him, Team Flash was in the brain. Dr. Wells stated, Hartley Rathaway possesses one of the finest scientific minds I've ever encountered. Joe inquired, any ties to Rathaway Industries? Dr. Wells explained, his grandfather founded the company, his father expanded it, and Hartley here was set to inherit the throne. What happened? Inquired Barry. Caitlin explained, he came out to his parents, old money, old values. They were estranged when we met, but brilliant. Without his assistance, the particle accelerator would have taken a few years longer to complete, Dr. Wells explained. You've never even mentioned his name, Barry pointed out. Caitlin explained, that's because Hartley had a challenging personality. What she means is that he was mostly a jerk, but he could be a dick every now and then, Sisko explained as Joe chuckled. Let's just say that Hartley, like many outliers, struggled to connect with his peers, Dr. Wells stated. Yes, Caitlin responded, but he was always your favorite. The chosen one. He referred to himself like that. Sisko continued as Linda realized Naruto hadn't said anything and was staring at the photo of Hartley with a blazing rage she'd never seen before. Are you okay, Naruto? Linda said as they both glanced at him. I could have gone my entire life without seeing this asshole again, Naruto remarked, staring at Harley's photograph. Are we missing something? Inquired Sisko. Hartley had difficulty relating to his peers, but Naruto's relationship with Hartley was never friendly. They had a very tense history, Dr. Wells explained. What he means is that Hartley was an arrogant, all-knowing, condescending jackass, Naruto explained, as they were taken aback that the normally collected and level-headed Naruto was so enraged. Hartley always looked at me as if I didn't belong, and he did his best to prove himself right at every opportunity. Which he failed to do because Naruto has a tremendous scientific mind, even at such a young age, and Hartley underestimated him, but that didn't stop him from speaking his mind and saying some rather, Uncolorful things about Naruto and his parents, Dr. Wells explained. Do we even want to know? Asked Barry. That my very presence in Star Labs was a proven sign that nepotism rules over everything, especially when it comes to a brain-dead spiky-haired animal with an affinity for orange, Naruto replied, recalling one of Harley's most scathing insults to him. When I started college, Hartley told me that, which earned him a black eye and several bruised ribs. Joe said, damn and it only got worse when Naruto interned at Star Labs under his parents one summer. He called him. Dr. Wells replied, not wanting to say it again. A spiky-haired waste of cells trying to prove himself to two washed-up scientists who would have more luck discovering the scientific value of pi than building a particle accelerator, Naruto stated as they were horrified. Caitlin mentioned, Naruto. I know it wasn't my proudest moment, Naruto said, but he deserved it. After that, I strictly limited Harley's interaction with the rest of my staff and Naruto's parents. That was one of the contributing elements to his dismissal a year ago, along with a disagreement we had, Dr. Wells explained. 
What are you talking about? Joe inquired. Who cares, Naruto said before Dr. Wells could respond. Hartley may have had bad parents in a difficult childhood, but that doesn't excuse his actions any longer. We're tracking him down and putting his a dollar dollar in the pipeline where it belongs. As everyone was tense, Naruto left the center to let off some steam. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen Naruto that angry, Joe commented. Neither do I he wasn't like this even in a fight or against those muggers, Linda explained. One thing you've never seen from Naruto is his rage. It was significant when he was a child, but his parents assisted him in controlling it. He learned to control his rage and put it to better use when he goes out to guard the city, as you may have observed. But in Naruto, this kind of hatred is a ticking time bomb. Let's just hope it doesn't get any worse, Dr. Wells said. XXXXX line break while the others in Star Labs sought to figure out how Hartley did all the damage and hijacked Dr. Wells' sound system, Barry and Joe proceeded to the CCPD to go over the evidence and track down any leads they could on Hartley Rathaway. No one had seen Naruto since he rushed out of the cortex in rage, and Dr. Wells advised them to wait for Naruto to calm down before speaking to him. Naruto was in one of the unused rooms near the arc reactor that he had converted into a training facility after Oliver had trained him. It's how Naruto improved as a fighter and how he did so well when he aided Dig, Felicity, Roy, and Laurel against Brick and his gang. He was dressed in a tank top and pants, battling against a training dummy to vent his frustration. He hit the dummy's arms, body, and head with speed and grace, demonstrating that Naruto knew what he was doing. When Naruto brought his right fist back and punched straight through the dummy, the dummy began to quiver and Naruto increased the tempo of his punches. Damn it, Naruto murmured as he removed his fighting gloves and drank some water to try to relax. I'd ask how you're doing, but I think I already know the answer, Naruto said as he turned to see Linda standing at the doorway. Sorry, Naruto apologized as he cleaned his face with a towel. And have you? Linda said, as Naruto groaned and shook his head. No, Naruto answered as he sat down, and Linda followed him. To be honest, I never expected to act like this again. I'll admit, I never expected to see you so upset, but it's nothing to be ashamed of, Linda replied. I'm not ashamed of it, Naruto stated as she glanced at him. All right, a little of that, but I thought this was behind me. What do you mean? Linda said as she took a seat next to him. When I was a kid, I had a temper problem, it wasn't that I went out of my way to pick fights, but when kids made fun of me or picked on others, I reacted, and it got me in a lot of trouble, Naruto explained as Linda laughed. Who knew Naruto, the charming and level-headed one, was such a hothead, Linda commented as Naruto managed a giggle. My parents helped me with my temper and I got better. That's also when I began my pranking phase as a way to substitute fighting. But it's always been there, lurking in the back of my head and it has crept up over the years like with Hartley. And how I'm reacting now just proves how right he was. I haven't changed and I'm no better than the Neanderthal he thinks I am. Naruto said as he stood up and ran his hands through his hair and exhaled. I've always been afraid of my anger, and I honestly feel like I'm a different person when my rage takes over. Linda stood up and took his hands in hers, saying, and I think you're wrong. Because the guy the first fell in love with over these past months isn't a monster or an angry Neanderthal. He's one of the most kind, caring, and smartest guys I know. Someone who can't be the monster you're afraid of turning into because a kind, caring, and selfless hero who goes out and protects the city at the risk of his life can't be that monster. I hope you're right. I never want to hurt you or the others, Naruto replied, cupping his face. And you won't. Everyone, including me, has a part of their past where they've felt ashamed or made a mistake. This is something you didn't know before, but I guess what better time to tell you than now but. I'm bisexual, Linda remarked as the shock managed to draw Naruto out of his funk. Excuse me, Naruto said, his gaze fixed on her. Yeah, I'm bisexual, and I realized it before I started college, Linda answered, still stunned and it's something that's never come up in our conversations before, which is why I didn't say anything. Wow, I wasn't expecting that kind of revelation, but thank you for sharing it, Naruto remarked, looking at her. So, you went through a sexy phase in college. Okay, glad you're having fun and getting back to normal, Linda remarked as Naruto kissed her. Hey, I'm honored you told me, and it doesn't change my feelings for you, Naruto smiled. However, it does increase the likelihood of me requesting a threesome. She punched him in the chest, which made him chuckle. It was just a joke, Naruto remarked as he kissed her on the cheek. Thanks, Linda. Anytime, Speedy, she responded, ignoring Naruto. So, should I be worried that you might leave me if you see a girl more beautiful than I am handsome? Naruto grinned. Perhaps, depending on whether she's blonde or not, Linda said as Naruto arched an eyebrow. Oh, okay. You like blondes, 
Good to know I had some points in my favor even before we started dating, Naruto replied as Linda grinned. There's the Naruto I know and love, he can't be the monster you're afraid of becoming, Linda remarked as Naruto kissed her once again. As the intercom went off, Naruto added, you are my lightning rod, never forget that. Caitlin stated as Naruto and Linda returned to the cortex, Naruto, we need you in the cortex. What's going on? Linda inquired. Caitlin stated as Naruto approached his suit, multiple 911 calls. Rathaway Industries is under attack. Perhaps you should wait for Mr. Allen to provide backup, Naruto, Dr. Wells said. No, I can do this, Naruto responded as he put on his suit and mask, I really need to do this. Naruto bolted from Star Labs and dashed to Rathaway Industries. Hartley stood in front of the building, blasting sonic blasts from green-colored mechanical gauntlets on his hands while massive panes of glass windows smashed and spectators fled in terror. As three police vehicles arrived, Hartley blasted a parked automobile. Hartley blasted one of the police vehicles, causing the bonnet to fly off and the vehicle to drift to a stop. The officers in the other two cars came out and aimed their rifles at him. Get down on the ground, yelled the officer as Hartley fired another sonic blast at the car, shattering the glass and driving the officers away. Impulse raced into the scene and punched Hartley across the face, knocking him to the ground. Impulse clenched his fists as he stared at Hartley, but suddenly relaxed. As he spotted Impulse in front of him, Hartley spit out some blood. It's over, Rathaway, Impulse declared. You know my name, and I know some names, too. Caitlin Snow, Cisco Ramon, and Harrison Wells, Hartley remarked via Impulse's communications. I can hear radio waves coming from your suit, around 1,900 megahertz, is that them listening? Are they going to hear you die? No, they'll hear you lose, Impulse said. All right, Hartley responded, raising his fists and firing a sonic blast. Impulse observed everything in slow motion and moved his body out of the direction of the blast, causing Hartley to hit nothing but air. Hartley fired again, but Impulse ran around him, kicked out his leg, pulled off his gauntlets, and kneed him in the face. Impulse dragged him up and slammed cuffs on his arms. I guess you were wise enough to see that coming, Impulse said. Wisdom enough to figure out who Harrison Wells is. You see, I know his secret, Hartley replied as Impulse seized him and sped back to Star Labs. Impulse pushed him forward as they exited the elevators. Being scooped up by a guy clad in head-to-toe leather has long been a fantasy of mine, Hartley murmured as Impulse shoved him forward. Cisco and Caitlin moved forward to assist Hartley in reaching the pipeline. Well, 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 the gang's all here, Cisco, and you've lasted a lot longer than I would have expected, Hartley exclaimed. And you didn't even last 10 seconds against Impulse, Cisco pointed out. I was thinking about calling myself the Pied Piper, Hartley explained. Hey, I'm the one who gives out the nicknames around here, though that one's not bad, Cisco replied as Hartley stared at Caitlin. Caitlin. I never received that wedding invitation, Hartley stated as Impulse grabbed him and kneed him in the gut. Shut the hell up exclaimed Impulse as Cisco snatched Hartley and forced him into the pipeline. Caitlin followed Naruto as he headed to the cortex and removed his costume. Hey, Naruto, how are you doing? Linda inquired as Naruto breathed. I'm fine. Looking at him now, he hasn't changed at all, Naruto said. And you didn't become the monster he thinks you are. You proved him wrong, Linda continued as Naruto nodded. You're right, Naruto responded. What's wrong? Linda inquired. Just a nagging feeling that this isn't the end, Naruto explained as he walked toward the pipeline. I forgot. You dislike emotions because they are messy, Hartley explained in French. At least she's not the one in a cell, they thought as Naruto approached. Sisko, Caitlin, and Hartley were taken aback by Naruto's command of the French language. Go. As Hartley smirked at Naruto, Sisko and Caitlin walked away. So, little fox, you wormed your way into Star Labs after all, Hartley replied in French. And you haven't changed a bit. You were an asshole then, and you're still an asshole now, Naruto responded. Little Naruto, you're always ruled by your emotions, Hartley said in Spanish, hoping to confuse Naruto. Emotions are a fundamental part of what makes us human, Naruto responded in Spanish. But I understand why you don't use them because they didn't build you with the capacity to recognize emotions like an actual human being. And look how well that served you, stuck in that cell all alone. I'm not going to be here for long, Hartley said in Russian. You'll never get out of that cell as long as I have a say, Naruto answered in Russian. Oh, so the little one has gotten smarter, which is impressive for a spiky-haired Neanderthal, Hartley said in Japanese. This spiky-haired human is currently working on new scientific advances far beyond what you were doing, and I have everything I could have wanted in my life, including a beautiful girlfriend, 
amazing friends, and a bright future ahead of me, unlike you, Naruto said. Except for your parents' approval. Oh, so predictable, little fox. Always groveling for their approval and for them to take you seriously and see you for anything other than a waste of space. How are you doing since their death? Hartley asked in Latin as Naruto tightened his fists in anger but quickly calmed down to avoid giving him the satisfaction of proving him wrong about being an animal. Fine. At least my parents loved me for who I am. Your parents may have been horrible, and staying in the closet was difficult, but that doesn't give you the right to try and ruin everyone else's lives," Naruto said in Latin as Hartley threw him a deadly gaze. Dr. Wells murmured as he rolled next to Naruto, enough, Hartley, give us a minute. As he moved back to the cortex, Naruto shot Hartley another murderous gaze. Hartley said, see you soon, Naruto. As he walked away, Naruto snarled, go to hell, Hartley. In Latin, Hartley told Wells, your silence speaks volumes. No man is more deaf than he who refuses to hear, Wells responded. As Naruto entered the cortex, Barry remarked, God, I wish I had taken a language in high school. Hey. Naruto responded, hey. Nice job matching Hartley shot for shot, Sisko said, nodding. Caitlin inquired, where did you learn to speak all those languages? I grew up speaking Japanese, and the others were easy with speedster brains, Naruto stated as they watched the cameras in the pipeline. It must be nice to have another loyal lapdog, Harrison. Naruto's brain functions are limited to simple fetch quests, after all, Hartley said. Naruto's genius is something you continue to undervalue, or was your verbal joust insufficient evidence, Well said as Hartley shrugged. How did you come to know we were working with the speedsters? Hartley explained, I wrote a hexagonal algorithm to track all of his known sightings and extrapolate a theoretical exit trajectory. In other words, whenever they fled a crime scene, they ran in this general direction. You are brilliant, and dot any anguish you have suffered as a result of my actions was never my intention, Dr. Wells said. Not bad as far as heartfelt apologies go. Except that wasn't for my benefit. That was for the idiots who follow you. Must feel good to have the great Harrison Wells behind you, doesn't it? But one day, this man will turn on you. In a flash and none of you will see it coming. Especially you flash and impulse. I only hope he leaves you in better shape than he left me. If you're lucky. Again, that was never my intention, and I sincerely apologize for what you've gone through, Wells said. How kind of you. I almost forgot that kind was a luxury for you, except when it came to your favorite disciple, Hartley replied, referring to how, despite being Wells' second in command, Wells still treated Naruto better than him. It must feel good to have such a loyal dog back, Harrison. Too bad Naruto is too stupid to see what kind of monster you really are. Naruto is many things, but one thing he isn't, is stupid. Wells responded. That boy has tremendous potential, potential I saw in him at an early age, potential you were jealous of ever since you laid eyes on him because you knew he would be smarter than you. He didn't deserve any of it. I've worked my entire life for science, putting countless hours into my studies to earn every single opportunity given to me, and it's just handed to him on a silver platter. That kind of genius shouldn't exist in a waste of human cells and organs, Hartley said, surprising Naruto. Genius and scientific advancement don't discriminate, that's one thing you never could grasp, Wells stated as he turned to go. I almost forgot. I told one of your pets I know your deep, dark secret, Harrison. Have fun telling him. Hartley stated as Wells departed for the cortex. As Dr. Wells came, the others waited in silence, wondering what secret Hartley was discussing. I assume you were all listening. Well, Hartley was telling the truth. I have not been honest with you. Dot any of you, Wells remarked, taking a deep breath. The accelerator. Hartley warned me that there was a chance that the accelerator could explode. His data did not show a 100% certainty, just that there was a risk, but it was a real risk, and yet I made the decision that the reward, that everything we could learn and achieve, that all of that, simply outweighed that risk. I'm sorry. There was a brief pause as everyone took in the information. Caitlin then rose and moved forward. The next time you choose to put our lives and the lives of those we care about in danger, I'll expect a heads up. Caitlin stated as she and Sisko walked away. Linda replied as Naruto bowed and walked away, I'll see you later. After the accelerator explosion, Sisko and Caitlin stayed by your side after everyone else had left. They deserve more than an apology, Naruto explained. With Hartley so intent on sending me to the next world, they might get more than that, Wells said. That's not what they want, Dr. Wells. You betrayed their trust, Naruto stated as he squeezed his nasal bridge. Look, I'll always be by your side no matter what, but if you want to repair your relationship with them, you need to do more than just apologize. Dr. Wells nodded as Barry left for jitters and Naruto headed downstairs to work in his lab. 
XXXXX line break when Naruto entered his lab, he was greeted by the familiar sight of a whiteboard with dozens of calculations and formulas written on it, notebooks with notes and drawings piled on tables, books on every concept of science and physics scattered about, and some old chip bags and candy wrappers in a garbage can. Naruto sat down at his computer to create some of his latest inventions, such as new body armor that would be a hundred years ahead of Kevlar, as well as new tactical gear and cutting-edge suppression and non-lethal guns for law enforcement. He was also working on designs for energy technology, environmental repair, and consumer technology. He was clearly proving Hartley wrong and demonstrating that he deserved his intelligence. Naruto returned to the Cortex to retrieve some items when he noticed Sisko at his workstation, staring at Harley's gloves. Naruto inquired, Sisko, what are you doing? Not sure. Something doesn't seem right. Hartley was using sonic resonance in his gauntlets, similar to the one you made, but you know what's strange, he had it set to the lowest decibel rating, Sisko stated as Naruto raised an eyebrow. He could have destroyed his father's building in one blast if he wanted to, but he didn't, he could have done it and left, but he stayed. Because that was part of his plan, Naruto explained as he dashed to the cameras and played the video of Harley's cell being blown open. Dr. Wells, we have a pipeline breach. Naruto exclaimed into the communication system as Sisko sounded the alarm. Naruto and Sisko dashed for the pipeline, which was about to be opened when it was burst open by an explosion, sending Naruto and Sisko flying back. Both Naruto and Sisko were knocked out by the force of the explosion and fell to the ground. Naruto awoke with a pounding head and ringing ears. His entire body hurt as if he had been thrown through a wall. He leaned up and saw that he was lying down in the corridor, surrounded by debris. He stood up, stumbling a little as he spotted Sisko laying on the ground, injured. Sisko. Naruto exclaimed as he ran over and saw a pulse. Naruto grabbed him up and led him to the brain, where he encountered Barry, Caitlin, and Dr. Wells. Caitlin examined Sisko as Naruto placed him on a gurney. Are you okay, Naruto? Dr. Wells inquired as Naruto nodded. A little banged up, but I'll be fine, Hartley? Naruto inquired. Dr. Wells replied as Naruto swore under his breath, he's gone. Shit! Yelled Naruto as he slammed the wall. I should have known it was going to be too easy to put him away. Dr. Wells told him, you couldn't have known that, Naruto. Well, I should have. If I really had the genius potential you think I have and Hartley is so envious of, I should have known it was too easy to stop him before, but I was too wrapped up in my own satisfaction of stopping him when I should have realized it was just a ruse, Naruto exhaled frustratedly. And I gave him access to Star Labs to do whatever he wanted, it's all my fault. I earn the blame, I'm not interested in sharing it. Hartley doesn't think I've paid for my crimes, and he's right. He won't stop until I do, Dr. Wells remarked as he turned to go. Where are you going? Inquired Barry. To regain your trust, Dr. Wells stated as he led Barry away. While Caitlin checked over Sisko, who had woken up and was nursing a concussion, Naruto got to work combing through every scrap of data to discover what Hartley took and trying to find a means to track him down. Dr. Wells arranged a news conference and told the audience that he knew the particle accelerator could fail but opted to turn it on anyway. Following that, Barry and Dr. Wells returned to Star Labs. Dr. Wells inquired, has Hartley made contact yet? What makes you so sure he will? Caitlin inquired. Because he's Hartley, and he'll want the last word, Dr. Wells explained as they examined Naruto on the computer. Naruto, try to get some rest. Even with super speed healing, you were hit by a massive blast, Barry stated as Naruto continued to work. I'm fine. I was able to isolate the code Hartley used to break in, and it will provide the answer to what he was looking for, not to mention I'm running an algorithm with the Star Lab satellite to track any sonic or vibrational waves his gauntlets give off, Naruto said as Dr. Wells approached. Dr. Wells advised him, you have nothing to prove, Naruto. Dr. Wells grinned as Naruto said, tell that to my subconscious. Dr. Wells inquired, do you know why we came looking for you, Naruto? Naruto responded, because of my powers. Yes, that was a factor, but it wasn't the only reason we came looking for you. Dot why I came looking for you is because when you came to me earlier asking if the particle accelerator had caused any change, I saw in you the same spark that you had when you were 10 years old, Dr. Wells explained as Naruto understood what he meant. You were babysitting me when I was 10 years old, and you showed me what my parents were working on and told me how science is supposed to be for the betterment of mankind. It's one of the reasons I wanted to be a scientist, Naruto explained as Dr. Wells agreed. At that moment, I realized you had the potential to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest, scientific minds on the planet, and you proved me right as I got to watch you over the years and I saw the mind of a man beyond his age, someone who solved problems and had a keen attention to detail, but more importantly, 
it was your attitude that proved me right, Dr. Wells said as Naruto looked at him. Anyone can pick up a physics book or put their mind to studying the sciences through rigorous work, but true genius is born. You and Hartley are two of them, but what you understood, and Hartley never did, is that science is never about proving how much smarter you are or putting yourself above your fellow man. True genius is about humanity. You and Hartley are both brilliant, you both have mental sparks. There is no chosen one, Naruto, no second or third favorite, it's just the two of us. The lovely moment was cut short when the communication system at Star Labs failed. What's that? Caitlin said as the speaker system began to play. Dr. Wells nodded and Naruto replied, Hartley. Nice gambit, Harrison, Hartley said, but this duel isn't over yet. Hartley, what do you want? What do you want, Hartley? I already gave my mea culpa today, said Dr. Wells. You don't think I didn't notice that press conference was a pathetic bishop sacrifice? Oh no, I've played with you too many times to let you get away with that. This is between you, me, and Impulse. Or would you prefer I use your real name? Naruto, Hartley said as everyone was shocked he knew Naruto was Impulse. Naruto warned him, you don't want to do this with me again, Hartley. Actually, I really do. It's time to prove I was right all along. What do you say, Harrison? One last game of chess? Hartley suggested. You and I both know that the winner of the game is the one who makes the next to last mistake, Wells explained. You're right. And I'm already at the board, so why don't you move your precious little crimson knight while I take out a few pawns? Hartley stated as he cut the line and Naruto's algorithm picked up Harley's vibrational gauntlets. Your algorithm detected Harley's gauntlets at the Keystone Cleveland Dam, Cisco explained as he drew the map up on the computer. He's putting innocent people in danger during rush hour, Caitlin said as Naruto put on his costume. Let me accompany you, Naruto, we can do this together, Barry remarked as Naruto put on his mask. No, Barry, this is something I have to do on my own, Naruto said. Naruto, be cautious, you know how dangerously deceptive Hartley can be, Wells warned him. Naruto tapped his ear and murmured, good thing I'll have you here. Naruto flew to the dam at breakneck speed. Hartley was driving down the dam road when he came to a halt in front of a long line of cars. As Hartley smiled, a woman in her automobile was terrified for her life. Rook to night 4, Hartley yelled as he fired sonic blasts at her automobile, throwing her off the dam. Naruto was speeding to the dam when he noticed the falling automobile, so he went up the dam, through the car, grabbed her, and came to a halt on the road, saving her life. As he stepped forward, Hartley scowled at Naruto. Naruto, you must immediately disarm Hartley, do you hear me? Wells exclaimed. On it, Impulse said as Hartley launched another sonic wave, sending four cars flying through the air. Impulse dashed forward, grabbing all of the passengers from their cars and dumping them on the road. Naruto, you need to get out of there right now. Dr. Wells yelled, but Hartley clicked a button on his gauntlets, causing them to emit a specific acoustic frequency that connected with the speakers in his suit. Arg! exclaimed Impulse as his entire body began to vibrate uncontrollably. I got the idea to use your suit's own speakers to kill you while watching you and Wells chit-chat, Hartley stated as Impulse sank to his knees and coughed out some blood. That sensation is your organs shearing apart, it hurts, doesn't it? As Naruto screamed in pain, Hartley booted him in the gut and knocked him to the ground. You're proving my point, what a colossal waste of space. I'm not sure what Wells or your parents saw in you, Hartley stated as Naruto managed to get to his knees. Oh, you can still stand. Guess I'll have to beat you into submission. Naruto's vitals are dropping out. What do we do? Caitlin exclaimed as she noticed his vitals deteriorating. I'm... dot not... a... failure, Impulse said as something inside him activated, causing his eyes to flare crimson and his body to tremble and pulse with lightning. What's going on? Hartley asked as Impulse rose to his feet and his body began to pulsate with more lightning, as if he had an aura of it surrounding him. What's going on? His vitals are evening out, Sisko explained. Hold on, there should be a security camera up there. Dr. Wells stated as he hacked into it and witnessed Naruto stand on his two feet despite the sound frequency destroying him from within. But what was most intriguing was that his body was emitting a shield-like aura of lightning about him. Hartley tapped a button on his gauntlet to increase the frequency, but Impulse's body vibrated even more as the lightning transformed into solid crimson and white light that encased his body like armor. The frequency pulse had no effect on Impulse's full outfit, which was shining with solid crimson and white lightning. Hartley launched a sonic blast towards Impulse, but the luminous suit just absorbed it. Wells said to himself, impossible, it's too soon. Impulse then advanced and grasped Hartley's gauntlets, he vibrated his hands, causing them to shatter, rendering Hartley impotent. 
Impulse then brought his hands to Harley's head and vibrated them to generate his own sonic pulse, which damaged Harley's cochlear implants and left him in agony from the horrific damage caused by the incident. Ah! exclaimed Hartley as he collapsed to the ground and clutched his head in anguish. It felt like someone was putting a spiked toothbrush through one ear and out the other without cochlear implants. Impulse then kicked him in the face and knocked him unconscious, after which the lightning aura vanished and he returned to normal. Naruto collapsed to his knees in fatigue, having run twice around the earth with an anchor strapped to his back. As he wiped his lips, he coughed out more blood and noticed Hartley was unconscious and the civilians were fine. Naruto. Naruto, can you hear me? Are you okay? Dr. Wells inquired as Naruto took a deep breath. Naruto wiped his mouth and continued, sort of. He managed to get to his feet and turned to face Hartley. Checkmate. Naruto returned to Star Labs carrying an unconscious Hartley. They put him in another cell and implanted him with non-explosive cochlear implants. Naruto sat on a gurney as Caitlin examined him. Aside from tiredness, he was okay. It just doesn't make sense. That sonic pulse was tuned to your exact frequency. You should have been unable to move, Caitlin explained. I'm glad you didn't want me to make it. By the way, I'm fine, Naruto remarked as Caitlin pinched him. You understand what I mean, she said. What happened to you? How did you do? Whatever it was? Barry inquired. To be honest, Naruto admitted, I don't remember much of what happened after Hartley activated that pulse. What do you remember? Sisko inquired. My insides were being shredded to pieces, and I had a killer headache, Naruto explained. Then. Just energy. Pure energy. Like when Barry and I run. Dot but 1000 times more powerful. It was fuzzy, kind of like dreaming, and my body was on autopilot. What exactly did I do? You were a badass, man, you turned your lightning into solid armor, it was insane, Sisko exclaimed. But how? Naruto inquired. There are still a lot of your powers that we don't know about, Naruto. Perhaps this ability is what distinguishes you from Mr. Allen, or it could be something else, but we'll run some more tests to figure out what happened, Dr. Wells remarked as Naruto nodded. For the time being, you should get some rest. Rest sounds good, Naruto murmured as he sat on the gurney in the emergency room. And thank you, Dr. Wells, for not losing faith in me. I should be thanking you, and I hope to repay your kindness and restore your trust in me, Dr. Wells stated as they smiled. That day was today, Barry replied as he shook Dr. Wells' hand and handed him the photo they shot the day before, which made Dr. Wells grin. Barry, do you think you can keep the city safe without me? Naruto jokingly asked as Barry laughed. Don't worry, Impulse. I've got it. Barry said as he, Caitlin, Sisko, and Dr. Wells departed to let Naruto to rest. Hartley awoke in a pipeline cell, cursing under his breath that he had lost and miscalculated. He turned around to see Sisko standing near the doorway. Your evil hearing aids will not help you escape this time. Naruto destroyed them, and the ones we gave you will be useless, so I'd get comfortable, Sisko advised. You must be having fun, Sisko, Hartley replied. Oh, I am, but I'm more pleased that Naruto was the one who beat you because despite everything you've said about him. He proved he was better, Sisko remarked as he turned to go. I can't imagine how you'll feel having to go behind his back and let me out of here, Hartley explained. Hmm, maybe I'm going deaf because you said I'm gonna let you out, Sisko speculated. And very soon, Hartley responded. And why would I ever do that? Asked Sisko. Because I know what happened to Ronnie Raymond, and I know how to save him, Hartley explained to Sisko. And I think you're full of it, Hartley, always have been and always will be cisco stated as he turned to go and he's not the only one of your little team that you'll want to help getting caitlin her fiance back is important but what about naruto hartley questioned as cisco came to a halt so how about naruto cisco inquired there's a lot more to naruto's parents death than just a drunk driving accident hartley said as cisco pondered whether he was telling the truth dr wells was in his secret room stabilizing his speed force energy with a tachyon device Warning. The tachyonic output has exceeded the permissible tolerance range. Continual exposure is not advised, Gideon said. Wells instructed her to increase to maximum, Gideon. Raise to maximum, doctor. Speed force absorption is at 35% and rising, Gideon said. I'm not settling. I can't keep up my pace. It comes and goes, and I have no control over it. Gideon, how long can the tachyonic gadget be used? Wells inquired. The calculations were inconclusive. I'm sorry, doctor, Gideon said. That's okay, Gideon. This was only supposed to be a temporary solution. It would appear that after today, the final endgame is even closer than I thought. Wells stated as Gideon showed the video footage of Naruto's fight on the dam. 
You were aware of the consequences of your journey here, Dr. Wells, Gideon remarked. I am. I really didn't expect Pierce or the Asa to be involved, or Minato and Kashina's final gambit and tragic demise. Clearly, what they did appears to be affecting Naruto because it's the only reason for his increased intelligence or the unlocking of an ability he shouldn't have yet, Dr. Wells remarked. Gideon explained, all ventures have consequences, Dr. Wells. Indeed. I'll need to keep a closer eye on Naruto, or his progress may jeopardize my overall plans, Wells stated as he turned off Gideon. XXXXX line break the next day. Naruto was sitting at a table in the cortex, tinkering with some electronics and circuits to make what appeared to be a high-tech arm casing, but in reality, Naruto was working on some new stabilizers for Linda's powers. In theory, all she would do is put her arm in the casing, and then her light would power it and allow her to control the range and intensity of her light blasts. When Dr. Wells walked into the lab, he began soldering some components on the arm lock. Good morning, Naruto, Dr. Wells stated as Naruto looked up. Morning, Naruto remarked as he blew off the soldering iron smoke and returned to work. I see you didn't follow Dr. Snow's advice to stay in bed, remarked Dr. Wells. I did. I got eight hours of sleep, was rested, and ready, so I decided to do something, Naruto stated, taking another component and soldering it into place. And what is that? Dr. Wells inquired. A gift for Linda. A device that would allow her to control the power of her light blasts. A sort of light gauntlet, if you will, Naruto stated as Dr. Wells picked up the shreds of paper that housed his calculations. The arithmetic was correct, of course, but the complicated calculations and designs were beyond the best minds at MIT. Impressive. Your designs and calculations are getting better, Dr. Wells said. Well, I learned from the best, Naruto stated as he finished the final piece, Done, now let's put it to the test. As the device began to power up in the round palm base where the light blast would come out began to glow, Naruto took the power lines and connected them to a big battery, Dr. Wells inquired. I'm pretty sure. What could possibly go wrong? Dr. Wells shaded his eyes from the blast of wind and papers that dispersed all over the room as he noticed the hole Naruto's gauntlet made as he clicked the fire button. Are you okay, Naruto? Dr. Wells inquired, raising his arm and giving Naruto a thumbs up. I didn't expect that, Naruto murmured as he dropped in pain on the floor. Soon after, the rest of Team Flash arrived at the Cortex and noticed the big hole that had been formed. Barry was repairing the hole while Sisko was inspecting Naruto's gauntlet, Caitlin went to grab Naruto's tests, and Linda was inspecting Naruto. Linda commented, I thought Caitlin told you to take it easy. That was me taking it easy, Naruto explained as Linda smacked him on the head. Okay, I'm serious. You were nearly killed, and instead of resting, you were tinkering with some stupid gauntlet, Linda said, and Naruto held her hand as she gazed at him. Hey. I'm perfectly fine. Hey, I'm fine. Just a slight stinging in my head from your slap, Naruto laughed as Linda moaned. Trust me on this. I was only here overnight to see that everything was in order, which it is. Don't be concerned. Okay, okay. You're off the hook for the time being, Linda remarked as she kissed him. No, not really, Barry replied as they gazed at him while patching the hole. This isn't fun. Sorry about that. Naruto apologized as Sisko approached, carrying the gauntlet Naruto had crafted. Normally, I'd be pissed, but I'm too busy admiring this work of art. I'm referring to the wiring and design of this device. You're going to put me out of work, Sisko replied, holding out the gauntlet. No way, Sisko, I'd never do that to you. Besides, it's just something that's been rattling around in my head. Naruto remarked, it's nothing major. A hole in the wall? It's kind of serious. Barry observed as he finished mending the wall. What does it do other than blast holes in walls? Well, based on what I saw after looking at this beauty, once powered up, it would take Linda's light beams and allow her to adjust the intensity and range of her light blasts. Instead, it powered up the gauntlet and discharged a concussive energy blast of high mass negatively charged muons, but the intensity was set so that the explosion transformed partially into plasma. That's why the explosion went through the wall, Sisko explained. Was that for me? Linda inquired. Yeah, for your abilities. I think I'll have to make some adjustments first, Naruto remarked. How did you make something like this? Sisko inquired. It just kind of happened. The math wasn't that difficult, and after sketching out some designs, the building came easily, Naruto added as he noticed Sisko deep in contemplation. It's just that this kind of circuitry, math, and design is at the MIT level. I mean, it's beyond MIT level engineering, Sisko added. Oh. I'm glad to hear I'm now on Cisco par level engineering, Naruto replied. I guess all that college studying paid off, Barry added. 
Caitlin stated as she walked in with a tablet with Naruto's medical scans, it might be something more than that. What exactly do you mean? Linda inquired as Caitlin connected her tablet to the main screens in the cortex by pressing a few keys on her tablet. These are the medical exams I've performed since Naruto joined us in October. Everything from cellular structure to brain imaging is covered. After your fight with Hartley, I did a full body scan to make sure nothing was wrong, and I found something odd, Caitlin said as she brought up a scan of Naruto's brain, and odd was an understatement. The entire cerebrum was lit up with activity, even more so than a typical speedster brain like Barry's, and there was a small flare up in the left hemisphere of his brain, like with an injury. What the hell is going on? Dr. Wells figured it was only a matter of time before Naruto learned about his unique mental ability, which would now open the proverbial Pandora's box about how this happened and what it had to do with his parents, and everyone was confused. How in the world did that happen? Brian inquired. Can someone explain what's going on to those who didn't major in science or biology in college? Linda inquired. Cisco put it frankly, Naruto's brain took some steroids. How did that happen, Caitlin? Naruto inquired. I'm not certain. The flare-up in the left hemisphere is from your extensive fight last night, and the scans I ran this morning show it healed but the rest stayed the same, Caitlin said as she showed them the scans she took just moments ago. I'm assuming that's not a figure of speech, Brian inquired. No, but it appears to be the case. Your cerebrum is much larger than a typical male your age, and its activity is much more hyperactive, even for speedsters like you and Mr. Allen, Dr. Wells explained. I believe that is the case. Here are the scans I took of Naruto when he first came to Star Labs after gaining his powers, Caitlin said as she brought them up, and they showed the same hyperactive brain makeup but the cerebrum wasn't as large as it is now, just slightly larger. Something you'd miss on a first glance. This is after the new year. Caitlin showed the two other pictures, which showed the cerebrum gray matter steadily growing and growing until it reached the point where it is now, implying that Naruto was indeed getting smarter, both literally and metaphorically. Okay, and I thought dealing with metahumans was weird, but this is weirder, Sisko said. So, what happens next? Is my brain going to keep growing until it explodes? Naruto inquired. I seriously doubt it, Naruto, but we'll need to do a few more tests to be certain, Dr. Wells explained. Well, this would explain why Naruto has been able to work on things that the US military would kill for, Sisko stated as he held out the gauntlet. It would also explain your work on the arc reactor, Barry added. That was my father's work, and I just finished it, Naruto explained. What about the other applications you showed me for the arc reactor? Or your other inventions for energy cells, capacitors, and weaponry much above conventional intellect, and dare I say, Hartley level intelligence? Dr. Wells asked, looking at Naruto, despite what appears to be happening to you, you've been using this ability for the better. And Caitlin and I will investigate further. Don't be concerned. I'm sorry. I'm just a little scared right now. My head is already bigger than most, and I don't need a bigger brain to make it even freakier. Naruto explained. At least you're not losing your hair, Sisko replied as everyone stared. Naruto would look ridiculously bald. Oh, very funny, Sisko, Naruto laughed as Caitlin set him on the gurney while she and Dr. Wells ran some more tests. Linda and Barry both had to hurry to work, but with Naruto at Star Labs, Barry agreed to cover for him. While Caitlin and Dr. Wells were working on the tests they ran on Naruto, Naruto was sitting at a table, making some adjustments to the gauntlet so it was less volatile, easier to control, and a lot less cumbersome. They ran every single test known to man to figure out what was going on with Naruto's brain. Dr. Wells was working with the results and set up a program on the Star Lab server to flag all known files that. Hello, what exactly is this? Caitlin inquired as Naruto lifted his head from his workstation. How are you? What file is that? Naruto inquired as he slid his chair over to see a highlighted file. Caitlin attempted to open it, but it was locked. I can't get into it, it's locked, she explained. Not for long, Naruto remarked as he took her place and began hacking into the file. Normally, this would take professional hackers hours to complete, but Naruto achieved it in a minute thanks to his incredible speed. He opened the file and they noticed a unique genetic sequence on a DNA molecule. Is that metahuman ancestry? I believe so, but in a different way. This isn't like Barry's DNA after the particle accelerator, Caitlin commented as she opened up the file and they saw it was Naruto's DNA. So my metahuman DNA differs from Barry's, that's excellent to know, because I've employed different powers than him, Naruto explained. No, this DNA sample is from 2012, Caitlin replied as she opened the file, and it was indeed from a physical Naruto had before college in 2012. No, that's not possible, Naruto remarked as Dr. Wells approached. Wait a minute, 
How are my 2012 DNA scans showing metahuman DNA? Better yet, why are my DNA scans from three years ago still in the Star Lab system? I was in college at the time. Dr. Wells conducted some investigation and discovered that the DNA file Caitlin mistakenly downloaded was on a Star Lab subserver, highly concealed and encrypted, and the only reason it was identified was because the tool Dr. Wells designed scanned through every single file ever entered into the Star Lab servers. That's a very good question. Dr. Wells stated as he looked into who made the file and the secret server it was kept on. This server was very well hidden and made by someone who knew what they were doing. Can you guess who built the server? Naruto inquired. One more second, Dr. Wells said, bringing up the Star Lab server log subroutine data and obtaining the id of the server's creator. It was your father. What? Naruto inquired as he noticed the login that created the server was definitely Minato Namikaze. Naruto was stunned for a moment as Dr. Wells and Caitlin both sought to comprehend what this meant. Naruto? Caitlin called his name as he blinked and struggled to find words. Okay, there are a million things going through my head that are leading me to worst case scenarios, but for the sake of hearing it, could my pre-particle accelerator meta-DNA be the cause of my enhanced intelligence? Naruto asked, trying to remain cool. That would be the most likely answer right now, Dr. Wells said. Alright, but what does it all mean? I assumed I obtained my abilities after being struck by lightning. How could I have acquired metahuman DNA before the accelerator exploded? Naruto inquired. Something tells me that whatever your father was working on might have the answers, Dr. Wells remarked as he attempted to access the server's files, but the encryption was too advanced even for him. Unfortunately, whatever your father was doing, he did a very good job of keeping it hidden. Naruto tried it, but the encryption was far too intricate and advanced for him to crack, so he needed assistance. Well, lucky for me, I know a very skilled hacker, Naruto stated as he took out his phone and dialed Felicity's number. Hello, Felicity? I understand that this is a difficult moment, but I require your assistance. I came across some very well encrypted files on the Star Lab server that held some solutions to. A question we've been working on but can't get through. Do you think you could look into it? He inquired. Caitlin and Dr. Wells exchanged glances as Naruto listened to Felicity's response. Felicity, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You're a godsend. I'm sending the file now. As he uploaded the server files to an email and forwarded it to Felicity, he remarked, Please keep me updated, and please try to expedite this. I know that seems pushy coming from me, but this is very important, thanks. Are you sure that was such a good idea? Dr. Wells inquired. Felicity is the only one who has access to that file. And if it has any answers to what the hell is going on with me, I need to know. Naruto responded. There has to be a reasonable explanation for why my father had this kind of server set up and why my DNA is so messed up. And what happens if you don't like the answers? Dr. Wells inquired. It has to be better than what I'm thinking of right now. Caitlin received a communication from Barry regarding a case from Iron Heights involving a new metahuman as Naruto responded. Barry thinks he has found a new metahuman case, Barry stated. Okay, I could benefit from a distraction, Naruto stated. Naruto, it's all right, Caitlin. There's nothing we can do about it until Felicity cracks the encryption. Naruto stated in a rather calm tone. What I can do now is help Barry stop another meta. Barry and Joe came shortly after with a peculiar case of a missing inmate at Iron Heights prison. The prisoner was meant to be in his cell upon check-in, but he fled, destroying half of the prison's cameras. Clay Parker, the prisoner, was possibly a metahuman, and the only evidence of his disappearance was some kind of organic particulate. They were astounded by the speed with which the particle moved when they placed it in the scanner. Not even Barry's and Naruto's cells move this fast, Caitlin stated as they examined the cells. So, Clay Parker is a metahuman, Joe inquired. Not so quickly. The particle material Barry collected in Iron Heights contains both Clay Parker's DNA and the DNA of a woman. Dr. Wells stated as he examined the genetic chromosomes. Compare her DNA to the CCPD criminal database. See if you can find a match. Barry stated that Cisco ran it and got one. Yahtzee. Shauna Baez is her name. Mostly minor offenses, yet this girl evidently enjoys partying. A long record of unruly behavior in neighborhood bars. Cisco stated. So, I'm guessing we'll find her, and then we'll find Clay Parker. As Naruto examined the molecules, the neurons in his brain began to fire, and he began to perceive something. Naruto, what's wrong? Caitlin inquired. Joe, do you have a copy of the camera footage from Iron Heights? Naruto inquired. Yes, Joe answered as he handed it over to Cisco, who entered it into the Star Labs database. All right, run it back to before the alarm went off. 
Then, bring up any nearby CCTV footage taken by the prison at the moment of the escape, as well as blueprints, as Cisco did these things and displayed them all on one large screen, Naruto said. Naruto, what exactly are you seeing? Dr. Wells inquired. Spooky action at a distance, but why the close distance? Naruto thought to himself as he began to put the puzzle pieces together. Fast forward the video footage to the time of the malfunction, but use a wide multimeter adjustment. That should provide us with the final second of footage before the camera was broken. Everyone was stunned, but Cisco proceeded to run the video through the multimeter adjustment, and three cameras managed to catch up the last second of footage of Shauna Baez slamming them with a long object. How about that, Joe asked, shocked that they obtained the clip. Cisco, please zoom in on her right hand. As Naruto said this, they noticed what appeared to be a club but was actually a small telescope. A telescope? Caitlin inquired. Not exactly what you bring to a prison break-in, Barry stated. Cisco, bring up the blueprints, but overlay the parts where the cameras were destroyed and Clay Parker's cell. Naruto said what Cisco stated, and the cameras were all close to one another and to Clay Parker's cell. All of the cameras were close together and pointed at Clay Parker's cell, Barry stated. Did the CCTV footage reveal anything at that time, Cisco? Naruto inquired. Several cars on the road, Cisco explained. Which was the one closest to the prison? Naruto inquired as Cisco paused on the footage of a silver and purple sports car driving along the road of the prison. That one picked up a car about a half mile from the prison road. As they stared at the car, Cisco said. Zoom in on the mirror and run an overlay adjustment. Dr. Wells said the same thing as Cisco, and they obtained a better picture of Clay Parker and Shauna Baez driving away. Now we know how they got away. I'll have CCPD put out a bolo on that car. Joe stated. Naruto, how did you know you could do all of this? Because I believe it explains her meta abilities, she has the ability to teleport, Naruto stated. A teleporter, as in, beam me up, Scotty, Caitlin inquired. Of course, there's quantum entanglement, the ability to move related particles over an unlimited distance, or, as Einstein would put it, spooky action at a distance, said Dr. Wells, impressive, Naruto. It's also the only way Shauna's cells could move so quickly, faster than either Mai or Barry's. Shauna and Clay were able to get from inside the prison to outside in their automobile without anyone noticing, and she smashed the cameras to make it more difficult for the cops to figure out what she was up to. As the others began to put the pieces together, Naruto said. But, if Shauna is the meta, how come Clay was able to teleport with her? Barry inquired. Perhaps she can teleport anyone she touches. Caitlin stated that she performed a fast test and that once another group of cells came into touch with Shauna's, they took on her traits. Look, once these cells come into contact with hers, they adopt her properties. Allowing her to teleport anyone she touches. Barry stated. Great, so how do we stop someone who can teleport to anywhere she wants? If she had the ability to teleport anywhere she wanted, she would have simply grabbed Clay and left, but she stayed to get the cameras, then go to his cell, and then teleport into the automobile. Naruto spoke up after recalling Linda's fight with Dark Force and how her radiance blinded him. Sisko, please remove the light source from Shauna's cells. Sisko did, and as a result, her cells were no longer overactive and returned to normal. Whoa, what happened? Joe inquired. That is crucial. Shauna has the ability to teleport, but she needs to know where she's going. It's why she was holding the telescope when she smashed the cameras, and why you discovered the particle in Parker's cell. His cell has a view of the outside world, so she transferred them there and then to the car. Naruto said this while pointing to a window on the blueprints that was destroyed by the first camera. And the first camera to be destroyed is the one closest to a window. This is how she got in. And the other cameras, all in close proximity to one another. Everything fits. Damn, point to Naruto's steroid superbrain, Sisko stated. Super what? Joe inquired, it's a complicated and long story, Barry stated. However, Naruto might have solved this one in record time. Shauna has to know where she's heading. That's how we'll put a stop to her. We'll get started on something for this circumstance, said Dr. Wells. I'll go to CCPD and see if I can find any of Parker's old contacts, Joe said as he walked away. Amazing deduction, Naruto. As I already stated, you are putting your newfound ability to good use, Dr. Wells informed him. Right. My super genius IQ, deduction, and crime-solving abilities are the only advantages of my super-growing brain. The upside is that I'm a Japanese Sherlock Holmes. The downside is that my head might explode. Naruto remarked cynically as Dr. Wells laughed. I don't believe it will happen. Naruto, I would never let anything happen to you. You are aware of this. As Naruto gazed at him, Dr. Wells said, 
We'll figure out what your father was doing and how it relates to your newfound intelligence. You have my word on it. Naruto answered, I know. For now, let's figure out how to blind a teleporter. As Sisko sat back in his chair, Dr. Wells said as they headed to a workstation. Now that Naruto has gone all Sherlock Holmes on us, how about we call it a day and go get some lunch? Sisko inquired of Caitlin. What do you think, Caitlin? Should I go to Jitters or have a taco? On me. Perhaps later, Caitlin replied as Sisko stared at her. You okay? Caitlin sighed as he inquired. I was looking for my tablet at your workstation, and I found this. Caitlin remarked, holding it up to display a digital copy of Project Firestorm on the screen. I'll explain. I know you said we shouldn't look for Ronnie anymore, but I didn't stop looking for Ronnie, Sisko stated. Why? Caitlin inquired. Hartley, he claimed to know what had happened to Ronnie, Sisko informed her. Oh, Hartley Rathaway, who is currently imprisoned in our super jail for going insane and attempting to kill Naruto with sound waves, Caitlin inquired. Yes, he made some bad decisions and is a jerk, but I looked into what he was saying and, Ronnie's gone, Sisko, and I'm ready to go on with my life, Caitlin explained. Are you certain about that? Because I'm no expert in love, but in order to move on from Ronnie, you'd have to go on. Sisko stated as Caitlin considered what he said. But wait, there's something else. What, Sisko? Caitlin inquired. As Caitlin gazed at Sisko, he said, Naruto. Hartley stated that their death was more than just a car accident, Sisko stated. Sisko, Hartley could be saying all of this to entice you to let him out, which you're considering. Now, if Hartley knows something, which I doubt, I don't think Naruto wants to even consider allowing him out of the pipeline. Caitlin spoke up as Sisko nodded. But what if he really does know something? Sisko inquired. Then we informed Naruto. For the time being, he should remain where he is until he can demonstrate otherwise. Caitlin murmured as Sisko nodded grudgingly. To be continued. That's it for this part. Thanks for listening to this video. If you did enjoy this part of the story, like, share, and subscribe for more. And thank you all for having support. And have a great day.